Hi, you're here sewing with Cody, and we're still playing with the Bernina 535. So in the first video, we went over all kind of stuff. In the second video, we're going to go over some more stuff, because um, there's so much stuff to go over with all of our Bernina machines, but we're just focusing solely on the 535. It's such a wonderful machine. So some of the things that we went over before, and some of the things that are important with, about the 535 that make it a little bit different from some of the others, is the 535 is the only 5 series machine that's a 5.5 millimeter stitch width. I really like 5.5 five and a half millimeter stitch width machines when I'm piecing quilts or when I'm working on really delicate fabrics, when I'm doing some really intricate things. And that's because those five and a half mil that opening, that five and a half millimeter opening is narrow, which is excellent because our feet dogs are also narrow and close together. So when we're working with smaller feet like the number two or even like our number six foot, our feet are smaller, our feet dogs are close together, so it's easy to maneuver and work with really small pieces. I love working with Elizabeth Hartman patterns. I've done a number of Elizabeth Hartman patterns. One, the awesome ocean in the background you can see here. Uh, we're dealing with really small pieces. And that five and a half millimeter stitch width, working with our quarter inch feet, either a 37 or a 57, um, another narrow foot, it makes it easier to feed and mess with those little pieces, opposed to working with a nine millimeter stitch width machine. Nine millimeter stitch width machines have many, many, many advantages, but I really enjoy a five and a half millimeter stitch width machine when I am piecing my quilts. Um, so that's one thing about the 535. Um, other things that we're going to go over is many, gosh, there's just so much. I don't know where to begin or where to continue. So we're going to continue through. We went over some decorative stitches in the different folders, and we'll try and dive more into that. We've, we've played with some of the alphabet stitches in combination mode, how we combine those stitches to create a name, and we can add a decorative stitch to that. We can really play with that. Uh, the next one are our buttonholes. So here are our buttonhole stitches. So the 535 has a number of buttonhole stitches, but also in our buttonhole tab, we've got more than just buttonhole stitches. We also have the button sew on function, and we use our number 18 foot to sew on our buttons. We'll see that in our feet videos. We have an, an uh, eyelet stitches, which allow us to create a little eyelet hole to feel like cording and things through, and so it will secure that opening. But we've got different buttonholes, some for knits, some for everyday sewing, keyhole buttonholes. There's a lot of different ones. So if you have questions about some of those buttonhole stitches, one thing we talked about in the first video is our question mark button. We can hit our question mark button, and let's say, what is buttonhole number 53? This is a stretch buttonhole designed for knit fabrics. There's a buttonhole, there's a feature for every application with the Bernina. So those are our buttonhole stitches. The next fold tab are our quilting stitches. These are some of my favorite stitches. I am a quilter and I do love these stitches. Um, so we've got a number of different blanket stitches for applique. And as you can see the horse over there in the corner, I love my applique. But some of our blanket stitches, and that's where we're going to continue here. So here, we'll work with some of the applique stitches. So we've got a number of different stitches, 1309 through essentially 1312 are great applique stitches. The difference between, say, 1309 and 1310, the biggest difference is one's a single stitch and one's a triple stitch. So if we see any stitches, and this is not the case for every single stitch, but the majority of stitches, like 1309, 1310, you can see how one's darker than the other. It's like 1310 darker, that's a triple stitch. Same thing with 1314 opposed to 1313. That is a triple stitch. So that means the stitch is going to go back and forth over it three times. So basically we have three layers of stitching, which is give, a, give us a bolder, stronger look and application. But many times we don't need that bold. That's just for looks. So typically with applique, I like to work with a 100 weight wonder fill. That's Invisifil thread that I absolutely love because it really just kind of just blends in with our fabric. And I'm working with Stitch 1309. So Stitch 1309 is designed to work with foot number 20, which comes with the 535. So the way we work this, so we'll put on our number 20 foot and we'll select our Stitch 1309. So what it does, it puts the stitch right in the center. 
But what we want, what I enjoy, is moving it all the way over to the right. Because remember, with Bernina, we have absolute stitch control. So we control all of, our, all of our stitch. So we move it over to the right. It tucks beautifully in the corner of this foot. And we can make it narrower and make it a little tighter to really give us a nice blanket stitch. So it's just going to nicely catch our fabric. But when we're working with the 100 weight Wonderfill and Visifill thread, it really just blends beautifully. And of course, with applique, we always want our needle to stop in the down position. And using our knee lift, we would want to be able to pivot. So we'd be able to pivot along, working with that nice applique stitch. So we can stop, cut our thread, and you can see what a beautiful applique stitch that is. And that's a 1.7 millimeter stitch width and a 1.6 millimeter stitch length. And then pivot, it allows us to create a beautiful, beautiful applique. Now, when talking with applique, and we'll go over this more when we work with this foot specifically, there's one thing, there's a little trick. And this is with all of our Bernina machines. So here in this corner, see how it left that little gap? It didn't leave the gap. The stitch was just doing what it does. So as the stitch came down and bit into our applique fabric, we stopped in that corner and we pivoted the fabric. The very next thing that stitch wants to do is come forward. By it coming forward, it left that gap. So there's a trick. So we're working with our blanket stitch. You can see it's biting into the fabric. So we always want to stop when we're doing like a 90 degree corner, any type of corner. We're going to rotate quite a bit. We want to stop here, which would be in our background fabric. So we'll pivot. But we don't want to just start sewing again. We want to start from the beginning of that pattern. Because the next thing it wants to do, it, if we don't start at the beginning, is it wants to come forward. And then we're left with that gap. So the way to prevent this is we want to start from the beginning. So basically, pattern begin. So if you saw my first video, you'll know a pattern begin button appears right in the center of the screen not with this stitch. This stitch, the machine says, I'm at the beginning of the pattern. I don't need the, begin the pattern begin button. However, you need to restart the pattern, but you don't have a button to restart it. There's a trick. What we do is we click our stitch 1309 again. By selecting the stitch again, we're going to that stitch which entail, which means it's going to restart it. So what it's going to do is let's take a closer look. So what we'll see here, our very first stitch bites into our applique fabric. It doesn't come straight down, it bites into our applique fabric. So it gives us a beautiful, oh, let me find it on the camera, a beautiful corner. That's exactly what we're looking for. And I'll go over this when I do applique videos. So there will be applique videos, especially working with the Bernina machine. So just stay tuned if you're more interested in some applique. But that's a trick that I like to show everybody when working with this blanket stitch. But to give you an idea of what the triple blanket stitch may look like. So here is our triple blanket stitch. So it gives you a nice, big, bold look. And it's excellent if you're looking for that boldness. It's also more secure. But in our quilting tab, we've got quilt, a hand quilting look stitches. So it will give you the look of hand quilting. That's a whole nother video. But some beautiful wave stitches, which I've used in other videos to quilt some quilts. We've got some absolutely gorgeous fit stitches. And we'll go over more of those in some quilting videos. And down here is where we save, where we can save some of our stitches. So there's one thing that we haven't gone over yet, and that's our buttonholes. We talked about buttonholes, but we haven't really done one. Making buttonholes on our Bernina's is so easy. Uh, you just, it can't be any easier. So let's select one of our buttonholes. 51 is our most common buttonhole. So we see it on the screen. So what we'll do at this point is one, we will put on, we will put on our 3A buttonhole foot, our automatic buttonhole foot, which comes with the Bernina 535. 
So there's a little trick with this. So right now our machine is threaded with the color thread that we want and everything. So we've got our needle threaded. So the little trick, this was something that was taught to me years and years ago. So with this foot, there's no little slit to get our, fat, our thread underneath our foot. So we take our threaded needle and we bring that threaded needle through the opening of the buttonhole foot. And then from underneath, we grab it. So now our tail of our thread is underneath our buttonhole foot to start off with. Couldn't be easier. So remember with the Bernina, especially if you're coming from another brand, the Bernina buttonholes, uh, working with this buttonhole foot, they start making the buttonhole from the top down. Many other brands uh, make the buttonhole from the bottom up. So you just need to pay attention when you are, especially when you're first starting to make your buttonholes, when you're coming from another brand um, or like the Burnett's, we want to make sure that we start from the top of the buttonhole and work our way down. Well, it's going to work our way down, but we want to make sure we start at the top. So what we're going to do here is we're going to tell the machine what size button we're going to be using. So we got our buttonhole selected. We're going to go to a little eye. Remember, a little eye holds all of our information. So right here where it says 16.0, we're going to click that. And that's that was 16.0 millimeters. So here, we will then take our button. I don't have a button, unfortunately. I really don't use buttons. Uh, so we'll take our button. We'll place it on the screen. And then we'll use our multifunctional knob, either one, to change the size of that yellow circle. Remember, all of the Bernina machines, the screen is such a high resolution that everything's to scale. So we change the size of that yellow circle to, to match the size of our button. And then we can close out of that screen, and then now our button is the right size. However, there's one more thing. Let me go back here. So if you happen to know the exact size of your button, you don't have to put it on the screen. You still come here, you look at your pack, and the pack says it's an 18 millimeter button. So then we come here at the top number. So you see we've got two different numbers, but we look at the top number because that's the number that's measuring the button. So here we'll change where it says 20.5. We change that to 18. Bam. You don't have to put your button on the screen. You can get a very accurate reading uh, by using the measurements on the uh the packaging of your button. So all we have to do, we have to thread the bobbin any differently, we don't have to do anything differently. We just start sewing. And it has, you can, as you can see here, it made the buttonhole from start to finish all by itself. And it knows the size because we told it. So there's our beautiful buttonhole. Now remember when you're making a buttonhole or when, you, when you're working with any type of satin stitch or some of these decorative stitches, you want to make sure you're working with the correct needle. Because sometimes they'll get customers, they'll come and they'll show me their buttonhole that they made and it's just not as smooth along the edge and they're just not happy with it. But come to find out they had a universal needle or they had a ballpoint needle or like a stretch needle and they're working with woven cotton fabric. Well, that's the wrong needle to get a very pretty satin stitch. You want to make sure you're working with a sharp, a class sharp needle. So that's like a Microtex, a top stitch, a quilting needle, an embroidery needle. Those are pretty much your, those are your sharp needles. And they're just going to give you a much beautiful stitch. I go over needles in a whole nother video. But just say if, because of the weight of our thread, that the stitches are too close. Or in some cases, stitches are too far apart, where it's more of a zigzag and less of a satin stitch. Here, I think we've got an excellent button, but just say if you had um, the buttons that were, the satin stitch wasn't satiny enough. You can use your stitch length button, and we can change that stitch length. We can drop it. And by dropping the stitch length, it's going to give us a much more thicker, fuller, prettier satin stitch um, without changing the size of our buttonhole. So I'm going to do another buttonhole with the new size difference. So you can see the difference. So 
So we'll be able to see here that the new buttonhole, the satin stitches are tighter and closer together. I don't know if you can really see that on the camera, but here you can see a little bit of space and here we see almost no space. And all we did was decrease the stitch length of that buttonhole and made it more of a satin stitch. And we can do the complete opposite. And also, if you'll notice when we change her buttonhole, it changed the stitch that we need. I'm sorry. When we changed the buttonhole, it changed the presser foot that we need to use, which are three A, an automatic buttonhole foot. All right, that's enough for this video. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. There's, I've got a bazillion ideas for videos and things to work with with all the machines and different techniques and different feet. So subscribe and you'll start seeing all those things, all those videos pop up. So enjoy and happy sewing.